Well, good morning. It's a privilege to have you join us for Open Door Church's remote service for September. We've got some really exciting news um, to share with you this morning. But before we share anything, before we carry on, we're going to just give this time to God. Liz, do you want to just invite God to join us for this service? Aye. God, we just want to thank you um, that you never change, God, in a time of such uncertainty and a time where things are changing almost on a daily basis. God, we just thank you that you are the rock and you stand firm and you're a solid foundation for us. And so, God, we just invite you into this time, Lord. We just pray that as people tune in from wherever they are, that you would just still our hearts and still our um, fears just calm us lord in your presence and lord may we um, just have ears that are open to hear what you're saying to us at this time lord i pray that um lord that you'll just you receive the worship that's offered up today in jesus name we pray amen amen thanks for that that was lovely so uh, yeah, we're going to be sharing some uh, a time of worship this morning. We're going to be, uh, Liz and I are going to have a chat around the Word of God. Uh, but also we wanted to share some really, really exciting news. And that news is that we are hoping that on Sunday, the 4th of October, we will be able to invite you back to Horse Cars, our home church, where our church is based. Um, so it's really exciting. There's a lot of work to be done um, by the leadership team and various other people to put in place some robust plans so that we can come back safely. But with the government announcing that lockdown's going to get a little bit longer, uh, we just felt that it was a right time. And that's a unanimous decision by the leadership team that it's a right time to come back into the building. So do you want to just, can we just talk about this for just a minute or two about some of the basic uh, things that we need to be thinking about? How do we book in? It's all going to be the same as when we've done car park church, isn't it? If you're wanting okay. to attend um, Open Door Church on the Sunday mornings, you will have to book in every time that you intend to come so just because you've been there the first week or every week you will always have to book in because once we hit 30 people we cannot take any more um, so that's really important and we don't want to be at the point where we ever have to turn anybody away that's right and it also merits saying that if you are a long time member of Open Door and you've been coming for a long time and you want to come to the services, you are more than welcome. Equally, if you have joined us over lockdown and you've never been before, have a think about whether you want to join with us on Sunday the 4th. Equally, if you you belong to a different fellowship um, but your fellowship is not able to meet, you're more than welcome. It, we are literally an open door on uh, Sunday the 4th, up to 30 people. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be putting out an open letter. That's going to be on our Facebook page. It's going to go through our mailing list to our email contacts. Um, and if you want to get hold of that letter, you can read all of the detail about what's going to be um, happening on the day, some of the things that are required, and what you need to do to book in. So... Watch this space for the open letter. That's going to be coming out during this week and it'll be available here on the Facebook page and at various other places. We'll try and make it as available as we possibly can. Okay, so we're going to have a time of worship now. Um, so after all those announcements, just <laughs> take a couple of moments and just, just settle down, ready to worship God. Hi Open Hi. Door, James and Lucy here, we're going to play a bit of worship for you, Gaz and Liz have asked us to join in on your service today, uh, so I hope you're all well in lockdown, um, we're going to sing four songs and I think Gaz will put the words up at the bottom, hopefully. The first one's King of My Heart. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my soul. You are Of my heart 
be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my son. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my son.
Cause you're perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us You are perfect in all Listen to a thousand tongues But there is one that sounds above them all Father's Son, the Father's Love Sung it over me and for eternity. It's written on my heart. Heaven's perfect melody, the creator. Symphony, you are singing over me, Father. So heaven's perfect mystery, the King of Love. 
sent for me You are singing over me The Father's song perfect melody the creator's symphony you are singing over me oh the father's song Heaven Mystery, yeah. King of love has set for me. You are singing all the me. The Father's song. The Father's soul Be lifted As we bow down, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up. Let the nations be glad Let the whole earth tremble Before you are God Come worship the Lord In the beauty of holiness As we Be lifted up. Be lifted up.
the heavens rejoice, let the nations be glad, let the whole earth tremble before you are God. Come worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness as we Jesus, thank you that we're able to worship you. While we're not together, while we're perhaps in our homes, we thank you for the amazing plan that you've created, that our spirits can commune with you, that when we worship, wherever we are and whoever we're with, that we can commune and we can connect with you. We just want to thank you so much that we're able to respond to a God who's been so loving to us that actually worshipping you is not difficult. So would you just accept our praises and our worship this morning? We just want to invite you as well to put your presence in each home that's represented. For every home that's watching this morning, we just pray that your presence will be palpable and tangible in those homes. And as we start to look at some of the things that are in your word, we pray that you would open up our hearts and open up our eyes to understand some of the things that you're wanting to say to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. So Liz and I are just going to take some time now, probably 10, 15 minutes maybe, 15 if we're lucky. <laughs> same for 10. Well, it's same for 10. We're going to just look through um, the, the word and we're just going to start at one point in particular. And if you've got your Bibles with you, this is a scripture from Isaiah chapter 44. And let me tell you before we begin why it is that we're looking at this particular scripture. In uh, the very end of August, we had um, one of our online, uh, one of our car park services. No, we didn't. We had an online service, didn't we? We had an online service at the end of August. And one of the things that we uh, asked in that service was that if God had spoken anything to you that you believed you wanted to share with the church, we asked that you fed back to us. And somebody did get in touch and said that they felt that they had this scripture really strongly on their heart for our church, for Open Door Church specifically. And it's these verses from Isaiah 44, reading from, uh, I think, from verse 3 down to 5. Liz, do you want to just read it for us? Isaiah 44, 3 to 5. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants, and my blessings on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass, like willows by the watercourses. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another will write with his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. Fabulous. We were, we were pretty excited when this word came in because, again, it was another word about water. And I don't know if you remember um, many of the words that have been spoken, but we've had loads of prophecies, haven't we, um, within Open Door about wells and about um, rivers of water. And we know that rivers can be a, quite a common theme within um, the Bible and within prophecy, can't they? But God seems to have spoken loads of stuff about Open Door being a source of water, and particularly water that heals and refreshes and brings life, doesn't it? Mm. Um, this is a really interesting scripture though, isn't it? Because um, 
it's one of those promises where God says, I'm going to pour out water on a thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I'll pour out my spirit on your offspring. And I think when we look at that first the first chunk of this scripture it's not just God saying oh I'm going to pour out water I'm going to pour out some springs of stuff but he, he specifies where and he talks about the condition of the place mm. where he's going to pour the water and I find that really interesting he talks about pouring water on a thirsty land and on dry ground it doesn't say a it's, thirsty land oh, it says, says on him who is thirsty I've got land. NIV what have you got Oh, the better one, New the King James. <laughs> New King James, so what have you got? It says, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Him? Oh, that's even better. And floods better. on the dry ground. Wow, that's an even better, that sounds like a better translation. It is, you like, should transfer. I should probably transfer, shouldn't I? Well, we'll have a vote on it, maybe. Describe to us a person that's thirsty in this context. What does this mean to be thirsty? Can I like back the question back to you if I don't like it? Yeah. Right, sorry, I don't mind that one. Um, <laughs> it's somebody who's going after the things of God, isn't it? I think mm -hmm. even if you are spending time with God day in, day out, and as close to God as you have ever been, you could still be described as thirsty. Yeah. Because you just can't get enough of God. I think it reminds me a bit of an athlete that even though the hydrate, the hydrate, they're putting so much into what they're doing mm. they want more hydration more hydration which is funny isn't it because god does say that he's will give us living water so we'll never thirst again yeah um but yeah so i think for me someone who's thirsty is just someone who's going after the things of god yeah. or equally someone who's feeling a bit dry but has a recognition that they want more of god yeah and i think that they recognition is the key filling. isn't it i think somebody that's described as thirsty knows what they need yeah like, they need water so for me i think you could be both people and both people could be described as thirsty someone who's in a great high point with god feeling on that mountain top and equally someone in a valley that's just like I need more of God, I'm feeling really dry. Yeah. Both could be thirsty because yeah. they want more of yeah. God. But both of them are in a place where they're acknowledging there is something that you, God, have got and I want some of that. Yeah. And so I think it's wanting, isn't it? And in terms of somewhere being described as a, a dry place, places are only dry when they've not had rain, when they've not had rivers running through when there's been kind of a dearth of something or a um there's um an absence of something makes you think of like the plains like in africa where mm. it's like dried up and all cracked doesn't it yeah and the water can't get into the ground well enough because it's got so hard on the top it just floods over it doesn't it yeah and this talks about floods on the dry ground yeah wow yeah. it doesn't only just say it'll make the dry ground moist it says like it's a real of overabundance isn't it yeah yeah so then going on in verse three it says i will pour out my spirit on your offspring so for the for the first part he's talked about pouring water and then he says, I'll pour out my spirit. I think this, I feel like this is one of those places where God uses two different words meaning the same thing. Mm. He's spoken about water. He's now speaking about spirit. He's talking about one and the same thing, isn't he? And it's lovely there. The promise says, I'll pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. That's lovely, isn't it? That God's spirit is a, is a blessing. It says, they will spring up like grass in the meadow, like poplar trees by the flowing streams. Mm. And uh, one, one of the things... says they will spring up among the grass. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And like willows by the watercourses. I don't know what a poplar tree is, but willows, typically, if you're walking along a river it's unusual not to find a willow because okay. they love that environment so much okay right wow one of the things that this made me think about um 
linking back to the context of Open Door is I know that Open Door, we have got a place there filled with mums to a certain extent, haven't we? We've got a lot of mothers in Open Door and I wondered if part of this um, that God wants to say to us might be about children who are not exposed to the Spirit currently where there might be a thirst, where they might be able to... I wonder if there are mums in Open Door that could describe their children as being in a dry land, spiritually. I wondered if there are prodigals, perhaps. And I wonder if uh, one of the applications of this word might be to encourage uh, the, the continual prayer and the continual speaking out of faith to say, God, would you pour out your spirit pour out your blessing on my offspring that your that your spirit will be poured out on my children on, on your your actual children who might be described as prodigals at the moment so i wondered if that was one of the places that god might uh, might want to just push it put put this word in as as an encouragement it then goes on doesn't it verse what does yours let's go to your version because Start Mine's been wrong a couple of times. From verse 5. Um, one will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another will write with his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. Wow. So this is about people really declaring identity mm. and declaring their identity in using language about I belong to God. Mm. That, that just That really smacks of prodigals to me. Um, and and kind of speaks of, of people who've made a transition at some point in life to then say, from this moment on, I'm going to write this down, I'm going to carve this, I'm going to declare this, I'm going to make this this declaration that I belong to God. Well, if you look at the context of what we're actually reading, mm. it's about God's blessing on Israel. And it's about his promise to them, isn't it? Yeah. And in one sense, just like a prodigal has a recognition of coming home mm. or to father, the Jewish people have or need that time of recognition of, ah, there's an extra aspect here. And, mm. and this is what it's talking about, isn't it? I'll pour the Holy Spirit out basically on them. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a prophetic thing still yeah. to happen for them, isn't it, in many cases? Mm. So I think, yeah, definitely it's talking about people identifying with God in the fullness of what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So verse 4 seems to say there'll be a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Verse 5 seems to say there'll be quality. There'll be kind of, these will be people that, that are not kind of, oh, maybe, maybe not. There'll be people who are absolutely, yes, these are, I, I belong to God. Yeah, what I like about verse 4 is you think about the kind of things that spring up amongst the grass. Mm. Often we find them quite bothersome, don't we? Like <laughs> clovers, the dandelions, those kind of things. They're often things that spread really quickly. Yeah. And they just happen. You don't plant okay. them. They just come. Yeah. They're just there. Um, and like the willows by the watercourses, nobody plants them. They're just there. They found a favourable place and they go for it. So that's yeah. really encouraging, I think, for us as a church in terms of what God's promised about he will bring people. Yes. Because these things were not sought after or put there on purpose. They just, boom, they were there. Yeah. And I think that's kind of... For me, that feels like that's what God's plan will be at Open Door. Yeah, absolutely. Boom, people are there. I think you're absolutely right. And I think one of the things that, one of my thoughts about evangelism and how we do evangelism is that I don't feel that we can formula our way into evangelism that works. I don't think we can think our church full I don't think you can think people into the kingdom. I don't. I th now you can do things wisely. You can do things really well. And we've said, haven't we, as part of our um, 
our um, I want to say mission statement. We didn't call it vision. that. Our vision, our, part of our vision is that we're going to do things excellently. So that's our intention. But in terms of, oh, right, let's sit down with a blank canvas and work out how to reach people for God. I feel like God has got something different and unique in the way that he wants evangelism to happen at Open Door. And I think that what God would do is have people respond to a source of his spirit and healing. I think that's that's just a beautiful picture. Not to say, oh, we don't need to even bother about evangelism because God's going to do it. We do have a responsibility, don't we? We have a responsibility to remain thirsty mm. and to keep the well clear, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it's good, isn't it, that we can relax to some degree in the fact that God is speaking to our church, that he's got a fantastic future for our church and he's inviting us to walk into it. Let's pray into some of those things and just just pray those things in before we close. Is that okay? I'll start. (laughs) Jesus, we are really grateful for the many words that you've Um, highlighted in scripture the many things that you've spoken to us as a fellowship and as individuals we thank you Lord God that you've got an amazing plan to bring individuals who are on journeys and who've got giftings and who've got callings and and ministries and you've brought a whole bunch of them together at Open Door We thank you that you've designed Open Door to be um, a place where those people can flourish um, and in turn where we can be hungry for your spirit, where we can be hungry for the for your healing water to flow, where we can be thirsty for the work of your spirit. And we thank you, God, for the pictures that you've shown us in the past of your spirit like water flowing out and going into our community. And we just declare those words back to you. God, we want to speak out some of those things that you've spoken to us and ask, Lord Jesus, that you'd fulfill your word, that we might see some of those glorious things that you've spoken about. Jesus, we just want to thank you for um, your word and I pray, God, that each one that's been with us this morning will find truth and freedom in your word. We just want to ask that as well that that as we look towards meeting together physically again on Sunday the 4th, we pray, God, that you would be in our gathering with us. We ask, Lord God, for help as we work out the logistics. We ask, Lord God, for safety and protection where there are some real dangers for some. And we just ask, Lord God, that as we continue to do church with you and do relationship with one another, we pray that you would be central in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, just while Gaz was praying then, he mentioned the phrase um, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And God often speaks to me in songs. um, And this song just buzzed straight in. And it's by Jesus Culture. Um, And the chorus is where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Um, But the verse i'm just going to read the verses out to you because it just talks about the places open doors been the places it needs to go and the promise of those people coming um so it says step out of the shadows step out of the grave break into the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you Mm. dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting um it goes on to say, come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom. Bring all of your burdens, bring all of your scars. Come back to communion, come back to the start. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting for you. And the chorus goes, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. And um, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Um, 
and it talks about chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name, lives made whole, heart awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Mm. Um, these are just such powerful words and mm. I just really feel like Open Door is to be a space of freedom that because the spirit's there people will be set free and people will experience freedom there yeah. Um, yeah. we're not a very tying church are we it's a very it is a f like that kind of sums up how I've experienced open door that it is a free space it is a space yeah. where everybody comes a we experience god's grace and god's love and god's freedom but b it's a safe free space to use your gifts to build one another up to minister to one another but to impact the community impact your neighborhood impact the world um i think mm. that's that's how I kind of see open door, mm. a place of freedom because of Jesus. Brilliant. And while you were praying as well, I was just like, I just asked God, like, is there anything you want to say to open door? And all I got was, it's my church. Oh, wow, that's lovely. So, that's there lovely. You Isn't go. that nice? Would you pray that in, that this that you've just. Yeah. And, and, and we'll close out with that. Yeah, God, we thank you that Open Door is your church, God. We don't want to put any mm -hmm. stake or claim on it at all. God, yeah. it's your church to do with as you want. And God, we just pray that you would always keep our ears tuned to what your plans are. Yeah. God, I thank you that it is a place of freedom where people can come. People can be set free because of you. People can be unburdened because of you. People yeah. can feel free to minister the gifts that you've given them because of you. God, we don't want to put any constraints on you doing what you want to do. Mm. And Lord, we just pray that that would be a thing about Open Door, that it is a place of freedom. Yeah. God, because of your spirit, because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God, just pour out your spirit on open doors. Yeah. People are watching now. God, just pour out your spirit on the people watching. Yeah. And Lord, just absolutely saturate open door with your spirit. God, it's had, it's had its fair amount of rain penetrating into the building. But God, <laughs> we just pray your spirit would penetrate every single area of that building in yeah. the name of jesus and that it would be a place of freedom yeah god because of your grace because of your mercy and to glorify you we pray yeah. amen amen thank you so much for joining us you can join us physically to experience some of that freedom to chase after jesus and the freedom that he brings on sunday the 4th of October there will be a letter to follow which will be on our Facebook page as we've said because you've got to book oh. in <laughs> or you can't come uh, and we look forward to seeing 30 people then um, until then though be blessed and thank you so much for joining us incidentally I'm going to put a link to that song on our Facebook page underneath this video oh I want right to there. hear I want to hear how you've all danced along to it because it's one of those videos that you can't just sit and listen to and tap your fingers. You've got to get up and party on with God. So there is the challenge. Put on that song, video yourself, Dance around. and uh, we'll share a montage next month. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We will see you on the 4th or some other time. Be blessed. <laughs>